Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, it's a pleasure being here. And today I represent Encyco Consulting. Uh, I'm an environmental consultant. And um, we at Encyco, we are a dedicated team of uh, environmental consultants. We are specialized in waste and recycling management. Um, we believe that education plays a key role in the uh, sustainability environment. And also as consultants, we uh, try to be the point of contact in the construction industry between architects and developers and um, with the uh, local government officers. So our goal is uh, to have the best uh, waste management practice incorporate as early as possible during the design. Um, today I'm going to share uh, my presentation about uh, Strata Community Gardens, how to reduce landfill waste while facilitating community engagement. I'm going to share with you a couple of key issues about this topic and the policy framework that luckily can support us. And then I will share with you the three case studies I have analyzed, two Australians and one international case study. And uh, as a result, we are going to have a look at the lesson learned, basically the common links for success and their challenges. The goal of my presentation will be to spark a conversation about the need for local governments to require and support possibly strata community gardens in the open space to foster a sense of community while keeping food waste away from landfill and manage the and recycled on site. One of the main key issues is the increasing density in Australia. We are all well aware that capital cities continue to grow and uh, we continue to see an increasing numbers of apartment units in our cities. There is a common sense of dissatisfaction among residents because uh, usually they, the residents see that the outcomes are not uh, as they would like to, to see, because uh, big developments and high density can increase the pressure on local areas without adding too much value to their communities. Another key issue is uh, the food waste sent to landfill. We are all well aware that food waste sent to landfill has a very poor environmental outcome. And according to the FoodWise Association, up to 50% of general waste in our red beans can be uh, food waste, which could be easily uh, removed and composted. Uh, good news is that uh, from a planning policy point of view, um, planning policy already recognized the importance of green common spaces, particularly in uh, high quality green urban, sorry, particularly in high um, density developments. So we can see from a national level and then going down to uh, state and local government policies, there is already a requirement to have a minimum uh, percentage of square meters of uh, common open space, which could be, which is usually unfortunately not, uh, not well used, which could be better used for our purposes of uh, creating a sense of community. In terms of uh, food waste policy, we know that the national food waste strategy has the, set the goal of halving Australia food waste by 2030. And to do so, one of the key issues is to understand the food and drink material hierarchy, which uh, closely linked to the uh, circular economy that we were talking also before. And uh, basically, we need to understand that uh, to reduce the amount of waste we produce and send to landfill. We need, first of all, to avoid that production of food. Uh, we need to redistribute food. And then, as a way of very simple to uh, put in place system of recycling, we can do uh, our compost. And the, the case studies that I'm going to show you um, in, a, in a little bit, they clearly refer back to this food and, ma and drink material hierarchy. 
I'm really passionate about uh, uh, circular economy, so I just would like to share a couple of thoughts um, about the what's a, our approach that we should move from a linear approach that we have done in the past about taking the, mater the raw material from the environment, make our products and then use them as long as we need them and then just get rid of them and dispose. Now we are more in a culture of uh, um, recycling economy, but the, um, the next step for the future, I strongly believe, has to be, should be a circular approach when we uh, rethink and design differently in a way that we reduce the use of raw material and we try to keep our produce as much as possible in the loop. And uh, you will see then during this presentation that with uh, using uh, food waste, composting on site and using back in the community gardens is a very good uh, example of implementing uh, a circular economy within multi-story residential apartments. Now I'm going to share with you those uh, uh, three uh, case studies which are currently happening and uh, uh, really uh, successful uh, across Australia and in the United Kingdom. The first case study is uh, the Northbridge Apartments. They are an existing building in, uh, um, in Sydney, in the North Shore. The building was built in the 1970s and they have 41 apartments. The main driver of this uh, really um, successful project has been this uh, lady, Penny, who bought an apartment and moved there uh, seven years ago. She noticed that the ground floor has a wonderful green common area, absolutely abandoned. And uh, with the help of the, uh, their local government, the uh, North Sydney Council, and their program called Harvest Collective, she um, she got the skills and a bit of financial support to transform uh, the garden. To, first of all, she implemented a system of uh, a food waste bin, composting and warm farms, and then she uh, used the, the produce to, um, to improve the quality of the, of the garden. And uh, now there are six uh, carers, six residents, who take care of the, of the garden. And um, so far, they have uh, installed the three warm farms, two compost bins, and five raised beds uh, with veggies and herbs. But uh, most of all, it has been transformed from an ab abandoned garden to a community hub where the residents finally meet, have a drink, they have an afternoon tea, or even they celebrate their birthday of their kids. In terms of result, 50% of waste uh, have been uh, diverted from landfill in the past seven years since they started their project. Uh, there have been a 50% of residents' engagement, which is a good result, and uh, even uh, water savings uh, thanks to the, um, they have replaced some non-native plants with native plants. And uh, talking with the Penny, one of the key elements has been to um, help the residents to make their life easy. So what they've done, uh, so the residents will just bring all the rubbish down to the basement car park. There are three waste streams, so there is also the food waste bins close to the other waste streams. So the residents just drop their uh, um, waste and they just go to work and then those uh, dedicated residents uh, manage all the system. The second case study is in, uh, in Melbourne. It's called the Commons. It is an award-winning sustainable property um, development which has inspired the Nightingale uh, project. Probably you know already a little bit about of this project, but it's been designed by Breath Architecture and built in 2013. It has uh, 24 apartments and a total of 40 residents. Uh, in this case, the main driver has been the uh, ethical investors, so uh, there were the residents who were going to be the new, um, yeah, the future residents and the architects. They were very early during the design stage on board and they delivered this, uh, this great uh, uh, project. In this case, there were no funding from the local government, but uh, the officers were on board, so they supported all their uh, development application. And um, the commons, they have, again, a system on site for composting and warm farm, plus uh, a uh, very beautiful roof uh, garden terrace. 
They also have a shared laundry. They organize uh, twice, uh, um, once uh, fortnightly, they organize some community events and they also have a, a common cafe on the ground floor. The beauty of this project is that people want to live here because it offers the, the easy life of being very close to the CBD, but still residents can um, enjoy a sense of community, they can be in contact with nature, and they can live sustainably. In terms of uh, results, they have 100% of food waste diverted from landfill, and again, there is an average of 50% residents' engagement. The last case study is an international case study. It is in the United Kingdom. It is one of the greatest sustainable communities in Europe and is based on the lesson learned from another project called the Bed Z in the United Kingdom. It is a new construction project realized in 2009 and it's much bigger with 172 apartments divided on two buildings. In this case, the main driver have been the developer who has, uh, from the early stage, um, taken on board the One Planet Living certification framework. One Planet Living has a set of different uh, uh, targets, including the zero waste target, both during construction and there during operation. Given the big size of these developments, um, a new important role has been uh, uh, implemented as a sustainability integrator, as a new green facility manager, who not only take care as a facility manager of the, of the buildings, but also uh, take care of the, um, the compost facilities and also supports the residents um, achieving their sustainability goals. And the development has a different uh, range of apartments from studios to three bedroom apartments. They have uh, six sky gardens, they have roof terraces, they have mini allotments on the roof, and also an additional community garden, so it's quite a broad development. And they also have uh, 2,000 uh, square meters of, on the ground floor of community space and offices. In terms of outcomes, there have been 70% of residents that's modified their behavior. And uh, given the big size of the development and the big amount of food waste produced, they have uh, implemented a big HANA composter machine, so, which is managed by the uh, green facility manager. So basically the residents, um, they bring to the, to the ground floor their uh, um, food waste in uh, bio bags and they just drop it in a chute system that delivers the food waste into the big HANA machine and then it gets all uh, processed. They also have a local uh, food canteen and um, this project has been so successful that uh, has inspired the planning authority to introduce uh, a planning advisory note on food and planning, which is something that we would love to, to see also here in, in Australia. So based on my research, the uh, common links for success are surely to have a strong main driver who will take care and deliver the initiative, which is a bit different than usual. To have then a designated carer who uh, will take care of the compost system and managing the garden. It could be, based on the analysis, probably some champion residents if it is not a too big uh, scale development. And then if it gets bigger, we need a, a green facility manager. We could be a good uh, new role to see in the future. Residents' engagement is another uh, key element, and to help residents to stay in, engaged in the long term, we need to make things easy for them. In terms of challenges, those uh, three case studies are quite different between one another. So I could say that for the first case study, um, the main challenge was to gain the residents' confidence at the very beginning, given that the project was already an existing building. And for the future, they would love to continue to be self-sufficient. For the commons, which has been a different project already, 
design in a different way. Uh, they are having some issues with the uh, community roof garden reaction in condition, mainly to the strong winds on the roof terrace, so they're trying to address that. And in the future, which is good news, is to keep up with the amount of food waste that's collected, that currently the compost and warm farms are struggling a little bit, so probably they will implement a new compost machine. And for the third case study, the main challenge has been the transient population, because they've noticed that if people are just renting, sh renting short term, they are less interested in uh, putting a bit of effort and uh, building a sense of community with their neighbors, and a bit also the non-English uh, uh, speaker residents. So as a conclusion, my uh, take home messages will be that uh, this type of uh, system, so to have uh, food waste composted on site and used, and then the produce being used in the community garden on site as well, has clear benefits from an environmental, a social, and a health point of view. But we need to remember that every development is, is different, so it can be quite challenging, and we need to adapt our approach to each development. We need to accept that not everybody will be on board. A 50% of uh, residents' uh, um, involvement is a good result. And uh, it could be labor intensive. So there, we need to think beforehand who will take care of those systems. Uh, and it could be either champion residents or maybe implement a green facility uh, manager. For me, my, the main goal of um, that I'm showcasing in this research is that uh, it's very important to close the loop within the community. So I believe that having people uh, seeing with their eyes and touching and feeling what's happening to their waste, that will really um, make a, a possibly make a difference in their behavior and they possibly could start their sustainability journey and start to live more sustainably. So starting from waste, they could expand it to be more water wise and be more conscious about transport, et cetera, et cetera. So I really hope to see in the future more of those examples and possibly to see in the um, you know, local government legislation more suggestion in that regard. And um, this system could be successfully implemented not only in residential um, developments, but also will be perfect for aged care developments and also for schools. So yeah, that will be my, my vision. So thank you very much for your time. And